Hey folks, thank you for tuning in to the Film Photography Podcast. My name is Michael Rosso, and today I'm here in the studio with Mr. Matt Marash. Oh, hey, how's it going? John Fideli. Hey, baby. And Owen McCafferty. Moin. We're going to be talking about movie film and some things that we've never talked about before that, that we've received emails about constantly throughout the last few years, and that is movie development tank options in 2023 and beyond. Ooh. Prince. Yes, P-R-I-N-T-S, not Prince. What's his best album? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have one? Yes. Print, which was called o- Ocean Rain? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Ocean. Purple, oh, shit. purple Rain. The projection formerly Ocean known Spray. as Prince. Michael, Michael, Michael. He's also spinning in his tomb. Yes, he is. Oh, uh, the- I was going to say uh, Prince and David Bowie are spinning so fast in their tomb that they create energy. Because of what the estate does with the library. Because of how they're like just r- ripping apart the back catalog for every nugget. Anyway, thank you for tuning into the Film Photography Project. Film. Yeah. Yes, not the Prince Photography Project. Yeah. Prince, how can you project your negative film, but there's a catch? What? And then Matt. Hey. Matt's going to talk about aspect ratio. Yeah. Which is a really great topic because... Mm. A lot of folks are getting their film, you know, they're shooting their movie film, mm-hmm. getting it scanned, and then are usually working in a 16 by 9 HD. Or, or trying to fit that world. Trying yeah. to fit it. And where do you, how do you fit your film? There's yeah. so many options. There are. And it, it's, I learned it's not the same as getting ratioed on Twitter. I guess that's a different thing. <laughs> and can you just put tape hey, over the video on your screen? Yeah, just put the black bars yeah, wherever right. you need do, them. Do like yeah. the old uh, cameras used to yeah, do, the point shoot <laughs> cameras. Just put two little... Right. Yeah, yeah. But but let's start at the beginning. Yes. Let's talk about like developing motion picture film yourself. Who does that? Who's dumb enough to do that? Um well, it's actually smart because it saves you a lot of money. I'm sure it does, but god, it's uh, look, it sounds daunting. Folks who are already developing their own still photography film w- want to develop their own movie film. So, Owen, so how do you do how it? How do you do it? And what are the yeah. options? Uh, you go in your bathroom, turn off all the lights, and soup it in the tub. There you go. Honestly, that's, <laughs> that's, a lot of people that's do where that. it starts, the bucket. All right? Because yeah. I'm, I'm imagining it's going to take a big thing to put all this film in. Yeah. Uh, the, the processing movie film is no different, in theory, than processing still film. You just have more film, and you need a bigger tank to, to do the film in. Because you know that motion picture is just basically still photography Absolutely. at 24 frames a second. Yeah. I mean, or, or we could or say 16. most still photography is, is just pulled really, from motion. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So, I mean, it, like Mike said, processing your own movie film is a great option. I don't do it because I necessarily love doing it. I do it because I'm cheap and, you know, I don't want to pay Mike to process my movie film. So I just do it myself. Yeah. And the good news is there's chemistry available for anybody who wants to process their movie film. For any movie film you shoot, there is a chem- with, with the exception of Kodachrome and expired formats or uh, emulsions. There's all the chemistry is available that might change depending on where you are in the world and what kind of film you're processing. But generally speaking, you can get all, most of this chemistry yourself. Mm-hmm. And from the FPP store. Absolutely. You know, if you're shooting black and white negative, it, nothing really changes. It's black and white negative chemistry. It's a, uh, a soak, a rinse, uh, then a, a developer, and then a stop bath or a water bath, and then fix. And that's it. Um, black and white reversal is different. There's a bleach step. That's a whole other ball game. But ECN2... And uh, C41, same, same as, as your still film. So what you do need, though, is a tank to do it in or s- some kind of vessel to do it in. And uh, this, there are a Does number this vessel of, have to be airtight or light tight, rather? It does have to be light tight. Okay. So a regular on, slop bucket's not going to work. Well, oh, it, well. It, it might. Yeah. Uh, there are people... Bucket. Uh, the bucket is on the list, believe it or not. So it's we're going to talk list. about the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now that might change if you're doing black and white reversal because there's a step in black and white reversal chemistry we have to re Expose the film to light. Really? So technically, it should be light tight for certain processes, but may may need light. So a bucket for other with processes. a piece of wood on top. Uh, sure. Yeah. Or in a in a black you... room, you could do that too. Oh, okay. Uh, but we'll talk about why the bucket is crazy. Um, there, so there's a video on YouTube. Of them. Oh my god! Yeah. I can't watch that video. Oh, it's it's nightmare it's fuel. Crazy. You know it's scratched. Oh my god! Anyway, Some people sorry. like that. Some people uh, like that. It gives me nightmares. So if you if you do develop your film in a bucket. It was detrimental to the emulsion of the film. Absolutely. So the bar has plummeted. <laughs> but if you're doing an art film and you want that... That might be a great sure. option. Okay. Sure. That might be Grindtastic. a good um, So one of the most popular that a lot of people who have done research <clears throat> on processing their own movie film is Lomo tanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lomo 
is was a Russian is a Russian company. It was founded in 1914. Uh, it's it was it stands for the Leningrad Optical Mechanical Association. Very oh. Soviet sounding name. Never knew that. Um, and Lomo actually, most people do know Lomo because the LCA, which was a 35 millimeter Lomo camera, is what I'm told inspired Lomography, the whole Lomography movement. movement this yeah. idea of like really cheap Soviet toy cameras. Uh, but they made tanks for processing, and, and all, the reason they did was because of the cost of processing was so expensive in places like Russia and the Soviet Union that a lot of uh, people processed their own film at home. It was very, it was uh, a lot more popular there in the United States. Vast majority of people did not process their their home movie film. So, Lomo tanks, they're also known as pancake tanks or UFO tanks. There are a number of different models. The most popular is the the uh, UPB one A, and that tank can hold fifty feet of sixteen millimeter film on two reels, so a total of one hundred sixteen uh, one hundred feet of sixteen millimeter film. But you will have to splice it because the mm-hmm. tanks are on top. the The reels are on top of each other, so. You can only hold 50 feet at a time. Or it can hold a whole roll of Super 8, so you get two rolls of Super 8 in that tank. You could do two rolls of regular 8 and 25-foot lengths. Um, or you could do 35-millimeter film as well. But oh. you, can only do, you can only do one uh, one layer of 35-millimeter film. So how big are these tank. tanks? In, com- the tanks in, in comparison to like 35-millimeter? Oh, much, much, yeah, spaceship. it's like a spaceship. It's yeah, like a pancake. It's, they're about the size of an LP, maybe a little bigger. Okay. Kind of like a Lego Millennium Falcon. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can relate to that. So that's the UPB-1A, the most popular. Uh, all, Lomo made a number of other models. They had a 30-foot version. I would not recommend that because that, the only thing... Foot. Nothing works. Yeah. Yes. Well, the only thing you do is regular eight, yeah. essentially. Um, so that, that version, and I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the model number of that is, but I see them on eBay all the time. Then there was the more desirable 100-foot version, um, that's that, the big guy. That's the big one, and those go for big money. You're talking seven, eight. I've seen them for fifteen hundred dollars. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, which is which? We'll we'll talk. There's a better solution there. We'll talk about that in, in a second. Then there was the PM four fifty one that could hold five rolls of sixteen millimeter film, so it looks almost like a stock pot, and you could put uh, five rolls of sixteen millimeter film or seven rolls of super eight millimeter film. Wow. And then you had the UPP-1, which was similar to the Morse tank, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. So similar system, but could hold 130 feet of 16-millimeter uh, film. Lomo tanks are hard to come by right now because most of them came from the former Soviet Union. So they're coming out of places like Ukraine, Russian Federation, Moldova. Um, so a lot of the ones you'll find here in the U.S. are being sold out of the U.S., and you'll pay a premium for that. There's a lot of disadvantages to the Lomo tank. <clears throat> Because, first of all, it's made out of Bakelite, which means if you drop it, it'll shatter into a million pieces. And so you know, Bakelite is almost always made with asbestos. So when oh. you do drop a Bakelite camera or a Bakelite Don't breathe. Phone, in- instantly get rid yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, very, it's very dangerous. The other thing is those tanks need a hose. The hoses are almost always going to be dry rotted. So you're going to have to find a new hose. But, especially, especially the big ones. The yeah. big ones, yeah. But all of it's, all of it's doable. And I've, I've had my UP, UPB1 tank for 13 mm-hmm. years. Never had a problem with it, wow. but my biggest fear has always been that I'm going to drop it, or it's going to break, or I, and then, and then what? Well, recently there was a company um, coming out of uh, Germany called Filmomat, and some people may know Filmomat because they made a big splash with their their the automated, automated processor, processor yeah. which is pretty pretty uh, amazing for what it did. Yeah, and it's about so U.S. The, now the Filmomat system was first invented for still film, mm-hmm. I believe, Yeah, right? 35 and 120. Yeah. yeah. And c- similar almost to a Jobo in the, in, in the idea of it's like an automated system that processes your film. It was like a sleeker... Well, it was a more inclusive Jobo ATL, but yeah. the problem is it was very limited in the amount that it could do, and the ask price was... 4,000 US right now. A pretty tough Yikes. pill to swallow, and it's a, it's a piece that, like... It looks like it should be in a high-end coffee shop, yes. not in a film. It's got lab. like clear acrylic, and it's yeah, very, it's very sexy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, yeah, four thousand bucks. Like, yes. I'll take the least sexy version for two grand. <laughs> for sure. Yes. Yeah. So the good news is, Filmomat created first a new pancake type tank, like a Lomo tank. It, it seems a lot thinner than the yes, Lomo tank. Yeah. It definitely is. But it was first designed to be used with the Filmomat system. Then they realized, well, crap, because the biggest problem with the Lomo tanks is that if the reels inside where you load the film up, if that 
cracks or breaks. There was no other alternative. Mm. People tried to to three D print them. I was it's say why can't you just three really, D print oh, it? I, I can answer yeah, that one, but please. well, let's keep. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say it's it's just you, you have to. It, it's very exact. I mean, mm. and thin to fit the film onto the reel. I have a buddy that he's really big into three D printing. He helped me three D print some niche solutions for like large format photography, mm-hmm. and he's really great about that. He three D prints solutions to stuff that doesn't even have a problem, you know, <laughs> but. I sent him, we went back and forth with four different um, STL files, like four different makes and designs of these 3D prints. And one was based off of the Lomo that took four reels, which it was really amazingly small. Oh, yeah, that's the, the, the you, what was it, the, the PM451. Yeah, it was yeah. based off of that one. Yeah. Uh, but it was really compact, and you could do a one hundred, uh, a hundred foot of sixteen in, in with like really low chemistry, and the tank itself was so tight and beautifully designed. Yeah. But then every single one of the three D printed ones that we did, it all came down to the reel, and the reel could never just there would be tension problems mm-hmm. or there would be problems um right spacing. A- right after spacing right after it catches the like as soon as your loop is kind of like locked onto the reel that's when it's like make or break because film you know film just has that little bit of snap and that tension and like it just didn't want to go so yeah. every one of those prints it, it sucked because it was like weeks of back and forth and it just never went so are the reels as hard to find as the tanks so they usually come print a tank together. And it's hard reels? to find one a, a reel on its own. Yeah, oh. so that's the problem. It's okay. like there's less reels because that's like the first thing to break. Mm-hmm. Oh. So no one's willing to give up just the reel. <laughs> and probably the best made reel is the one that uh, Owen's going to talk yeah. about. Or, yeah, so Filmomat then decided, okay, there's a bunch of people who really want this tank, but they don't want the system, which is going to cost them 4000 so they made a version of the same tank that can be used without the Filmomat system. You can use it just like a Lomo tank. What, the other big problem that I know a lot of folks who try to 3, 3D print different solutions is, especially folks doing black and white reversal film, they're using a very evasive bleach process, like dichromate bleach that has acid in it. Oh. And that, that would start to break away at some of the plastics they were using. Most 3D printed materials and p- people printing their own aren't going to have... The, yeah. the right filament or, nor the right printer that can give something that's resistant to these. So mm-hmm. if the first time you do reversal is might be the last time you yeah. use right, that tank. Yeah. It melts right in your exactly. hand. Exactly. So uh, they created uh, one that stands on its own, the film mat It retails for 1,449 oh, euro or about 1,600 bucks. I know that sounds expensive. It's tall order. Um, so I think the, the more important thing, I, I, I agree it's expensive. It's just amazing that there's something. Because if once those Lomo tanks were gone, if somebody else didn't have a, a new version, like be it. That, that's it. And those Lomo tanks would then be easily getting at or above that film map price. Yeah, yeah. because – and remember, we're talking about – it can do 100 feet. The most popular Lomo tank out there, the UPB-1A, it's, it can do 100 feet but on two 50-foot reels. So you have to take your 100 feet of 16. Oh, that sucks. Just cut it in half. Now, I, I don't mind doing that. You do that in the bag or in the dark? You do it in the dark. Yeah. And then load it onto the tank. Um, so this allows you to do 100 feet. The 100 feet Lomo tanks are going for around that price anyway. About God, why 900. So that to... just sounds like such a uh, task. <laughs> I mean, it's... listen, if you love the format and you love shooting it, yeah, you should love doing that. I mean, I'm sure you get I, some me, pleasure it, from doing I, yeah, it, right? It's it's I get pleasure from the money that I save. <laughs> That's I think, what I get pleasure. I think from. the other you know audience for this though, there are still um, a lot of regional schools that will have access to this, and they're mm. running on twenty, thirty year old BTS you know student equipment, and a film mat is also made to a higher degree than anything you can get 3D printed. It won't fall apart instantly mm-hmm. like an old Lomo that's mm. been shipped from who knows where. Yeah. Or give you asbestos when it breaks. Yeah, when it breaks. Yeah. So they are definitely aiming towards the higher end, but the build quality is amazing. The The best example I've seen kind of talking about the whole system and talking about the, the cost breakdown. Canadian um, friend. Yes, Noah over at Analog Resurgence had a really great video uh, reviewing the film mat. What I lo- And what I love about the film mat is the top part that keeps the film secure onto the reel is made out of aluminum mm-hmm. so i mean it's really high it's high quality i would argue way higher quality than the soviet tank that's a lomo tank then we talked about film mat there's a couple other there's the morse tank hey morse uh, which by the way made right here in ohio in hudson in ohio. ohio yep still no 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 oh, okay they uh but they made film for or they made equipment Tanks, yeah f- uh, photography equipment for the u.s air force that was that was how they kind of got their their company started 
that tank is much different than the Lomo tank, although Lomo made a version of it. And it has two reels inside that are adjustable. And they're they're metal. It's like they're they, metal. They, it's a very different way of... Sorry to hijack. No, no, go ahead. They're, it's a very different way. So all the reels that Owen's been talking about so far, they're very much like daylight reels. Um, but these ones don't go from the outside in. Those ones all load from the inside, right. the inside out. And you're spiraling hmm. it along. The Morse tank is very kind of like down and dirty. You you clutch it into this like metal thing that feels like it's going to cut yeah, you. Like a core. Yeah, like a core. But then you add it to the other core, and then all you're doing is just zipping it back and forth oh. the whole time. So an agitation cycle, it's a little bit more hands-on, mm-hmm. but the Morse tanks themselves are the size of like a countertop crock pot. They're mm-hmm. a little bit yeah. smaller, maybe about half that size. And so they're more chemistry efficient. But very labor intensive. Unless but you're you're doing this the whole time, for yeah. The whole or you can hook up, feet. or you can hook up your your drill. Oh, cool. There you <laughs> go. Right. I've seen yeah. a lot of people oh, hook smart. up their drill and that's zip smart. zip back and forth. That's get, smart. Yeah. So uh, the and those tanks, uh, I know they can do sixteen and eight. I don't know if a Morse can do thirty five. Can there's it? two Morse. Okay. Uh, so there's w- one that has the, the the double reel that accommodates like eights and sixteens, right. but then a lot of the older Morse ones that don't have the reversal window. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing. There's a different Morse that has a window mm. for re-exposing reversal film. You put your light right outside Which has there. always been the biggest complaint because I know a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't never reverses properly. You can't get enough light in there. Okay. Yeah. Morse tank also has a cork a cork plug, right? Yep. To keep There's the chemistry in. Yeah. Yep. Why you got to re-expose it to light? What does that do? Reversal. Yeah, yeah. during black and white reversal film uh, processing, you do a first developer and that develops one the negative step, image the negative image essentially and so then you ble- you bleach the film and then you re ex- then you clear it which takes all the bleach chemistry off the oh, film and then you re-expose it and that's what actually takes creates the, film the positive and creates the positive okay. then you develop it with a, no- a developer again Yikes. and that brings out the the it's it's magic when you watch it happen it's magic. Yeah. It's so much fun yeah Who, how did they figure this stuff out that's the crazy part, and they right. did it a hundred years ago. Right, you know? and yeah. and actually, you know, in an earlier episode, we talked about hundred hundred year birthday for sixty millimeter film, and I, I don't know if this is true. According to the Codex press release, when they released sixteen millimeter, they had touted that the reversal film was a brand like that was it. That was the the first fully reversal film available on the market for consumers. Mm. And they claim that it was the first time anybody had ever done it. I don't know if that's true. That's what they say. Because I, I think it's older. But <clears throat> Someone I in France did it. Probably. Yes. Yes. Or German. Mike, didn't we shoot all reversal 16 millimeter in uh, film school? Yes. You didn't, didn't almost even think reversal. about it. Ect- yeah. Ectochrome. Oh, yeah. ect- oh, color. Okay. Ectochrome or Tri-X. And 50 mm-hmm. foot. Uh, Super 8, 50 foot. Yeah. Tri-X or 16 millimeter Tri-X. Yeah. yeah. But the Morse that does the 35, mm-hmm. there are some that do it, and it's one, 100 only. You can't really expand oh, okay. on those. Yeah. So yeah. the max you can do in that tank is 100 feet, mm-hmm. no matter how you get to it. So the Morse tank, uh, I would say harder to find. If you go and look up Lomo tanks on eBay, I mean, you can scroll for a day. Uh, but the Morse tanks, I feel like those don't come to market very frequently. They also leave the market very quickly. Yeah. So like, if you see one, I before we... Uh, a few episodes ago, but, but when we came out to podcast, I right. saw one hit the list, and by the time I was in Cleveland, gone. so less than two hours, it was gone. And I would imagine wow. the reason for that is because the Lomo tanks are hard to find domestically. Everybody you're seeing... wants stuff now, right? And if yeah. you can buy it now and it's in the U.S., like you're going to have it in a few days. Yeah, yeah. The Lomos, you're you're, <clears throat> you're kind of tossing your money to the aether and hoping for the <laughs> hoping. best. <laughs> Another system that is, I would say, not popular at all for a lot of reasons. Jobo does make the Jobo uh, oh. tank system. This is newer? This yes, is newer. They still new. make it. Yeah. Um, it's a Super 8 slash 16 uh, processing. It's called the Processing Expert Drum, which is essentially where they've taken their normal. And I, I know, what's the name of their normal so drum? So the, I believe it's the same size as the Jobo 3063, which is a 16 by 20 uh, print processing drum. And what they've added is like a chan- they've added like a start clip, an end clip, and then like channels for just you Ridges. rotate and yeah. run it oh, along. That's cool. So you don't really ha- it's less accurate, and you can do it really fast. But well, you can only do uh, thirty four feet. So super eight, wow. that's great. But everything else, or no, actually not even no regular eight. That's, that's it, it because that's regular eight is normally twenty five feet. Super eight's fifty. Yeah, sixteen would be a real bear in that. So the advantage is you can throw it in a jobo, but you're still you know, you're nursing the Jobo yeah. through the process. And if you want it to do auto, you have to have a Jobo ATL3, which is like, money. that's a 
big lab. Cra- you're, we're talking way more than film amount money. Yeah. So oh. it's very niche. And due to recent price increases, that's like 1100 bucks now? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So the film mat, we started with expensive, but now we're talking about how awful some of these other options. I won't say they're awful, just but, expensive. but yeah, yeah, they end up being as expensive or way more effort. Well, so, yeah. what about innovation? Like, how about some kind of wacky reel that uh, emulates thirty-five millimeter? You know, the plastic reels Were that's you? bigger that just goes. Well, I mean, that's just, I mean, the Lomo tank is... And then go into a standard five or three reel tank. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, using, hijacking that system. Yeah. That would probably be, well, I mean... It's, Let's say for 16. Let's be it's simple. Not, it's not dissimilar from the 3D printed ones I've seen, but the problem is it, it all comes down to the reel. And the reason Filmomat's reel is so expensive is because it's injection molded. It's like a very heavy duty, and just like we dealt with at FPP with the 620 spools... Right. You lose a lot by going to even the best quality 3D print is not going to be close no. to a mid-tier mm-hmm. uh, mold. And molding has tooling. Yep. yep. So the cost always ends up, yeah, pretty wacky. Let's talk about usage. Is there enough customers to warrant someone inventing? That's the thing. Like, who To is- use it to that degree, though? That's the question. I though. mean, I think, obviously, Filmomat saw a need to, yeah. to make it. Um, because they could have just continued making the the system that they have for still photography, but there was a gap in the market, and the reality is these Lomo tanks are going to go away at some point. They're just going to fall apart, and there was no other option. So I'm glad. I, it's. I mean, I tell you what. As soon as my Lomo tank takes a crap, that's when I'm going to buy the Filmomat because I need something, and mm. that's it. Those are okay. as far as I know. Uh, I don't know if there's any other uh, options well, out there that you. Well, this know? wasn't on the topic, Mike. But can we talk drying? Because like that's mm. the thing that scares me the most about this. Where's it going to go? Yeah. Let's say you easy, have easy. your the, uh, one of the reels you recommended. Let's say someone has it. They're happy with it. They're developing their own film. Yep. Next step. Drying. Well, you can le- you can leave them on the reels. Oh, okay. Uh, it's but it's a, first of all, it's a pain once they're dry because you got to get them off the reel. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other problem that you risk when they're on the reel, especially with the Lomo, is that you still have film that's touching you know the reel itself, and that may not dry completely. Mm-hmm. What about like blotches? Just well, where water didn't dry. The or good the chemistry thing about, didn't dry. The good thing about keeping them. On the tank is that it keeps the film vertical. Vertical, horizontal? Keeps it... Vertical. Vertical, yeah. yeah. Keeps it vertical, which helps the chemistry run off of the film. Okay. There, but there there were uh, movie film drying racks. They kind of look like big cylinders made out of... With, like, wire. They look like the bingo wheels, but... Yeah, yeah. exactly. You kind of, like, spin with it around. Oh, but, oh, oh, but those they're, But they have, like, more, like, wires running horizontally, yes. and you just kind of, like, wheel Loop it on. it around. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you can actually tank the... You could take the Lomo tank with the reel out of the tank, attach the film to that. Uh, just start turning it. Yeah. And you s- just start turning it, excuse me, to unravel. Those are hard to come by. They, they There are people that are selling those direct from like Russia and Ukraine. Yes. But those are even worse because it's like a more awkward thing to, to ship. Shit. And if they have to take it apart, like yeah, you brother. don't know if you're going to get it back together. What about the wash? Just I- putting together like, you know, washing line, like stuff you'd hang your wash on. So, yeah, a lot of people take... Uh, they they take line in their basement like a string and they take Make paper clips loops. they take a paper clip and they put the film through the paper clip and and hang it that's an option the option that I use and have used forever is I have a a clothes horse oh clothes horse what they call yeah. it okay a clothes horse it, like the accordion style yeah oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and I just open that up and then I loop my film around it and I clip it on and it were I mean how much can you get on like that standard Horse. I've got a big one that kind of folds out probably like this. So I don't know what that is, six feet maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can fit two 100 rolls of 16 millimeter. Oh, that's great. But again, it depends on, because I loop it around the whole clothes horse, mm-hmm. not just like the stand. So, uh, and they're they're cheap. I mean, a clothes horse is less than 50 bucks. Uh, they're made out of metal. They fold up. So that's what I use. But there's, I mean... There's all kinds of way, ways that you could do it. Um, the the biggest thing I would say is that you try to do it in a place that doesn't have a lot of dust. Try to do it in a place that, that doesn't have... Because you know, dust can adhere itself to your uh, wet emulsion. film, and then its dust is embedded in your emulsion, and then it just never oh, comes off. Really? And yeah. this happens in professional labs, by the way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And just we've noticed that for whatever reason, uh, Vision 3 negative, don't know why, attracts an awful lot of dust. It's probably the, the removal of the... Re- I feel like that... That emulsion gets softer than a lot of other emulsions yep. when it's processing. And the softer it is. I mean, sometimes it's baked in, sometimes it's not. It's to the point where when we're scanning Vision 3 negative film, 
uh, Dave is standing there with, uh, you know, a, a cloth. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's running through his fingers through the yep. scanner, and it takes off an amazing amount of dirt. I believe wow. it. Yeah. I mean, he's, there's enough dirt for him to do that. <laughs> When we come back, we're we'll be talking about making prints because if you're in Brooklyn, you know what I'm talking about because you're going on the roof, and if you're not shooting it, you're going to a party where someone's projecting a film through a projector. Hmm. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. What's Joe Sony used Brooklyn. to say? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Earlier in the show, we mentioned price reductions on Brownie movie cameras. That covers the Brownie turret cameras, too. And now here's Ozzy to show you how they work. Well, here's the Brownie turret I use, and I can get three different kinds of movie shots with it. One lens gives you big telephoto close-ups. This is for your medium shots. And when you want a beautiful wide-angle shot, use this lens. Now watch. This is my wide-angle shot. Kids are pretty good, aren't they? Now I turn the turret, and here's my medium shot. Another turn, and here's my close-up. And I didn't have to move a step. See, what could be easier? Thank you, Ozzy. Now, about those prices. Now you can get a brand new Brownie Turret movie camera for just $59.50 or as little as $6 down. That's right, for just $6 down, you can make home movies with a real professional touch. So see your Kodak dealer this week. Hey, we're back. Folks may know, may not know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you shoot Ektachrome film or if you shoot Kodak Tri-X film, I mean, there are others, but just using those two because of the most notable names, you're shooting a positive film, which means when you get your film back and your scans back, you have a film that you could buy a vintage projector. You got a movie. Yeah, have a movie that you could show through a vintage projector onto a screen or a bedcloth. <laughs> <laughs> or a side of a house. Or a wall. So, White wall. Or if you're a film shooter and you've been shooting 16 and never thought about, right. you never thought about projecting your film, uh, Owen is here to talk about how do yeah options of making a print if you're shooting a negative yeah so like mike said reversal film comes from the lab as an image that you can put light through and project as a positive image onto whatever but if you use a project a negative film you're going to get a negative image and you might think okay well that's it i just use my digital scan and that's how i watch my it's my fine negative film which is great and you know this is definitely a niche thing there is a lot of risk to projecting film in a mechanical projector. It could jam, it could burn, it could rip, it could tear. Burn. I mean, you know, it, it wears out the film, it scratches it. Uh, but there's, there, there is a way for you to shoot negative film, movie film, and get a positive version that you can run through a projector, and that's called a print. And in the movie business, I mean, that's how the workflow has worked for years. Most big budget movies were shot on negative film, and then it was printed as a work print, and then it got synced with sound, and then printed with sound, and then there'd be an answer print, and then finally that that print is what goes to the movie theater, and you would see it in the movie theater. And you can, just like those professional, you know, just like Martin Scorsese, you can get your 16 millimeter negative, you know, Vision Three films. Uh, you can get prints of those that you can then run through a projector, and that that is what a print is. And essentially, the way it works is they take your negative film. And they put it on a machine called a, a printer, which, if we dumb it down, is essentially just a light box. It's, it's contact a, printer. Yeah. Yeah, it's a contact printer, exactly. So, what they do is they use a film called an intermediate film, which is a special type of film that, when processed, will give a, a positive image, but it's not actually a reversal process film, which is kind of cool. It really is sort of magic. It sounds um, super positive. It is super <laughs> positive. <laughs> Super positive. How, how do you do this? Well, firstly, you need to shoot your negative film. And then there are a couple different companies that can provide a, uh, a, a what we call a working print. Now, it's important to know the difference. A work print is just a direct print. So they are... No corrections. No corrections. Although most labs will do something called the uh, perfect light, which is essentially... Or best light, which is they're, they're trying to give you the best exposure they can. They'll run it like an analyzer, won't they? Exactly. Yeah. But normally what would happen is you'd take that work print, you'd edit it, you put it on a big editing table, and you might sync it to sound, and then they cut another negative from that and create what's called an answer print. Uh, you can do all of that if you wanted to. If you were like, hey, I just shot this movie, I want to add sound to it, I want to uh, do a bunch of editing, and I want a print that I can then take and project 
that's very expensive and you can do that. But if you're just somebody like me who, you know, I don't really shoot a lot of negative film. I'm always telling Mike, I'm like, Mike's like, oh, there's a new negative film. I'm like, oh, who cares? I can't do anything <laughs> with that. But if I wanted to shoot a, a negative film and I wanted to still project it, or maybe I have a positive film that I'm like, you know, this is too precious for me to project. I want a version. I want a copy of that that I'll project. One copy stays in an archive. The other one gets projected. They can do that too. They can make a copy of a reversal film as well. It's a separate process, but these companies do it. So uh, the big one here in the United States that does printing for a work print is Color Lab, which a lot of FPPers might know or those who sh- shoot movie film uh, would know. And uh, Color Lab does it for, it's a minimum of 200 feet, 16 millimeter at 45 cents a foot. So minimum you're looking at 90 bucks if you're doing 200 feet i was going to do the math but you got it yeah <laughs> um and then they i think there is a, a, a very small fee if if it's already processed if like you want by them yeah by them exactly yeah if you want to do super eight there are two companies unfortunately they're not here in the u.s if anybody knows of somebody who does super eight or regular eight prints in the u.s please owen at filmphotographyproject.com but there are two overseas, one uh, which is really well known in Europe called Andec. They're in uh, Germany. They will do Super 8. It's about um, $3 a foot, so it's not cheap. Oof. And you've got an 82-foot minimum, which is a very bizarre wow. measurement. I don't I don't know why it's 82 Where, feet. How'd they come up with that? Uh, well, I think it's based on me. I think it's, what? Well, that's 50. How many feet should we have as our minimum? <laughs> I don't know, 82. <laughs> I, think it's a 15, I think that's 15 meters. How right? much a foot? Uh, it is $3 a foot. Okay. For 82 feet? For 82 a, feet. So I you're looking at 260 you bucks. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. That's ridiculous. No Super 8 film is 80 feet. Exactly. So... There's no... So you I need, will ask the question. So it's two, <laughs> two, two roll minimum, basically, we're saying. Yeah, basically, yes. Okay. Yes. There's another company in the UK called Wides... Uh, Quick Wide, question. Yes, please. They're making a Super 8 print from Super, Super 8? Super negative. Oh, from Super 8 negative. Yeah. They're yes. making a print. Correct. So you would send them your 100 feet of Vision 350D, and yep. they would make... A super eight print positive. For you. Yep. Okay. That you can Great. then put through your projector. Terrific. Uh, there's another company in the UK, Wide Wide Screen Center. Uh, they do 50 feet color negative super eight, which is uh, 50 pounds, so about 55 bucks, 60 bucks. Or they'll do minimum 100 foot in 60 millimeter. That's uh, 60 pounds, or about yeah. 65, 70. Plus bucks. 23 dollars in shipping. That's right. <laughs> um, or, so or more. It's definitely. Uh, I plan to. Do, I've never done this, uh, and. I, I just bought a 100 feet of 500T that I was shooting during our filming this weekend. Yeah, rarity, by the way. Yeah, I never shoot. When's the last time you shot 500T? I've never shot it. Oh, okay, very good. I don't shoot. I very rarely. Are you, are you considering, once your film's developed, getting a print? I am, and I'm gonna do, we're going to do a video and review and the whole nine yards. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's a niche thing. Not a lot of people are going to do it, but... If you have something precious or a project, like I, it's, I think it's interesting that it's something you can do. You don't have to be Martin Scorsese to do it. You might have to have his pocketbook, um, his budget. But you know, it's it's a really, I don't know, that'd be a really cool thing to do if if you really wanted to project it, or at the very least have a version, uh, have a copy of it that is physical. And right. And you, and, and you don't ha- you can by the way you can get them to make you a copy of your negative film too if you just want like a backup. I think that's important because if you are going to that rooftop party. <laughs> and projecting your film you're using vintage machines like it's gonna beat down your film the oh, projectors yeah, are gonna beat down yeah. your film if I, the first film I movie film I ever shot on Kodachrome in 2003 I mean I projected it since I was a kid probably a hundred times it looks like it's been through Vietnam I mean it's really mm-hmm. you know it's scratch there's sprocket you know but that's what I love to do so yep. there it is okay uh, you know questions of any of this Film stuff. Oh, I have a question. Oh, yes, Matt. Do any of those labs that you just covered, Owen, um, let's say there are some of us who are just, you know, we we love our DI workflow Mm -hmm. or digital Mm -hmm. intermediate. Does anybody print from a a DI? Absolutely. So, and uh, that's actually the workflow there. Oh, Um, oh, geez. The right side is the digital workflow. So, yeah, you can, a company like Color Lab, you can send them a digital file, video file, and they will print it to film. Oh, great. It is not oh. cheap. But, I mean, you can do everything yeah. from 2K, 4K, and they'll print it to film. So you can do mixed media, which a lot of people mm-hmm. do, or mm-hmm. they might shoot, you know, 
three or 400 feet with film and then the remaining 100 foots may be digital or they interlace it or other film types. So they offer offer services that maybe you want to print there where half of it is a color neg and then the half of it's black and white neg. Mm-hmm. They can also put that onto a single print. Uh, so there's a bunch of things they can, Interesting. They can do. Yeah. So I guess this other weird question, I have no aspirations personally to like get on a deck and like try to edit 16. That does not appeal to me. I bar- I have barely have oh, it's the, best. the stones to do like resolve for as long as I do normally. Is it cheaper to actually have like, you know, cuts on like analog cuts and then just do a very small amount of DI or just do the whole thing digital finished if that's so, what I'm used to? So you're saying you've shot some fi- some movie film. Yeah, like I have everything shot in film, but like I've I've made all my, I have all my cuts, but there's gonna be things like effects and everything. And you want to do that in digital, yeah. But you want your output to be film, yeah. Like yeah, so it'd be it, way easier to just say, okay, the whole thing DI, yeah. Okay. Have have it scanned and then and then have them print it, okay, entirely from the digital file. Got it. Yeah, there are a few local um, local theaters that actually still will project uh, sixteen, yeah, um, super eight stitch for them, but thirty five as well. Yeah, yeah podcast at filmphotographyproject.com and when we come back we're going to talk about aspect ratio get your film back your scans what is this yeah what is it all about we'll be, we'll be right back I got no aspect fun's more fun with a camera wherever you are you know fun's more fun with a camera to capture it all as you go take your camera along Save it in pictures. Fun's more fun when you bring it home with you in pictures. So why don't you do as we do and take pictures of all your good times? At home or away, whether you take snapshots in black and white or color, color slides or your own personal movies, this very weekend will be a wonderful time to take pictures you'll always treasure. Take your camera along and save it in pictures. Why not get an extra roll of Kodak film tomorrow? Hey, we're back. Aspect ratio. So, Matt. Yeah. So you get your... I'm looking at my DPX right now. What is this? Yeah. You get your scan back. You shot it in your Aeroflex camera. Mm Mm-hmm. But the native aspect is what one three three to one. Yeah, this is this is different. It's uh, it's a little more square than all the other videos I'm seeing. So, uh, you know, your different films are going to have uh, a different aspect ratio, and that's just based on usually when it was made, what was popular, what was considered standard at the time. And for the longest time, pretty much until the late 1950s, early 1960s, in 16 mil. And a lot of formats, four by three was king. Like that was that was it. And, and for professionally the, on TV for, for the TV yeah. through the year, like the year two thousand. Yeah, as far as like standard TV. Yeah. yeah, that changeover. You can even see that in a lot of popular shows that hit streaming. Like you're like, oh, Will and Grace is like that. Yeah, I, I know the Office changes. It's a little bit. Seinfeld like remastered yeah. for Netflix is now sixteen by nine. Oh, it is. Oh, so it's cutting in. It's cutting in, and you could see the grain because they're cutting into the mm-hmm. picture. Wow, because they're doing pan and scan, in. right? Well, they're, they're essentially zooming in. So Seinfeld and Simpsons on Disney on Disney, and Mash, you're actually losing picture because they're yeah. shots four by three four square, by three. and they they don't want to have the sidebars and right. lose resolution, so they're just punching in. Mm. What? Because they I think they think they'll lose viewers. I really do. Which is weird, but because that was I don't know. Yeah, it's just well, a classic. It's the way it Imagine was. if you if you're a young a younger person, need a format, and you grew up at a widescreen your whole life and all of a sudden you go to watch a video and you've got these bars on the side you you're might gonna be start, you're gonna start that, crying oh, what is wrong black with my bars? TV or- I had a, a moment when I was a kid that really like threw me off because I, I didn't realize um, the difference between the widescreen and the full screen so when I got my I was super stoked to get the the re-release VHS set of Star Wars. Yes. This was 96. And the it was a gold of, box, right? It was out of well, the gold box was the good one. Oh, okay. It was oh, out of stock good. everywhere. So my my grandparents bought me the silver box. Wah, and I, wah, that's wah. 4 by 3. No, it was widescreen, mm. but on VHS, so my little 13-inch TV VCR combo, I've got like a 4-inch tall picture yeah. because I I'm like what the hell's wrong with this? You know, my buddy down the street, he's got the he's got the gold ones. So now I had to go over to I had to go over to Ryan's house to watch all mm. the gold the gold. And his was four by three. 
His was the full screen. So yeah. I thought that was better at the time because that's what right? everything yeah. was used to. Yeah. Yeah. But now the widescreens, you know. No one wants to see black bars think, um, on the side, on up top. and down, nowhere. Yeah. I don't mind it. I don't mind. I, when I watch my laser discs, which I'm happy to do, <laughs> I get the black boxes. I don't mind. When that guy called letterboxing. Redid, when they redid the Abbott and Costello, did they keep it native? Yes, they did. Yeah. Yes. That I don't mind. So, um, so now that everyone's totally confused. <laughs> that's all aspect ratio. So you though. get your files back. Mm-hmm. It's, Is it square or rectangle? That's what well, we're Matt's getting about. a square one. More square. Yeah. More square-ish. Four it, by three. Four or, by three. Or what's known as 1.33 three, three to three. one. So all that is really is just you're taking the uh, the width divided by the height, and that's where you're getting that number from. Mm-hmm. So 1.33 is the same if you take four divided by three. The standard that we're dealing with in a very HD world is 16 you know, sixteen by nine. So mm-hmm. if you divide that in, what's that going to be? 1920 by 1080. Yeah. But what's that... Um, What's that? One point is that one eight five oh, or one seven nine? Six, six to one. That's super sixteen. No, no. one point eight five. I think <laughs> one one four four. It's, it's one eight five. Th yeah. X eleven thirty eight. <laughs> Garfield one two three two three. Do it sixteen divided by Pennsylvania six five one seven eight. One seven eight and then one seven eight and that's like your standard sixteen by nine. But then there's the theater wide screen, which is a wider pixel, and that's yep. the one that's one eight five okay. or one eight eight. And then then you get your crazy. Long, long panoramic rectangles like your Panavision. Cinescope? Like the robe. Scope, yeah. <laughs> Ben-Hur. Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. Yep. Your 2Xs, your 2.32s, the crazy but those, stuff. those theaters were curved. The screens were curved, right? In a Cinescope? lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were special. Yeah. It was a big thing. And then, uh, you know, back to, you know, pulling it back to more, like, accessible film formats, your, your 8 and your 16. 16 has two main flavors and then, like, one more recent flavor so you've got your smallest in terms of surface area on your print you've got your 16 which is your four by three um i have the numbers ready for once so your standard 16 also known as your four by three it's 10.26 millimeters by 7.49 millimeters and that's your one your 1.3 aspect ratio after that we we started moving from double perf to single perf and your single perf uh, for a very short period of time was four by three, but it had room for sound on there. And yep. then that kind of went away and then, Oh, well let's open up that area and just leave it like that. So then cameras like the Airy SR, SR twos yep. and, and things like that. You could also modify super. cameras. Oh, amazing. Those have super 16 yeah. and super. It's truly super, super 16 is the most surface area you can get along. It's, it covers the in between the sprockets as well. It's really just edge to edge two sprockets. And now you're upgrading to a 1.66 aspect ratio, which is 12.52 millimeters by 7.41. Oh, so, so many numbers. numbers. Well, g- yeah. generally speaking, if you shot super 16, mm-hmm. uh, like we did with Brett Piper's Shockorama, Brett Piper. in editing, it just drops perfectly into a 1920 by 1080, very, 16 by Very nine. little loss yeah, you, at the you don't very lose top. Anything. Yeah. Very, yeah, almost so, nothing. Yeah, so perfect. So and if you're projecting... You gotta have an anamorphic lens. You have to have a specialty print or projection yeah. for it. Yeah. The the nice thing about Super Sixteen, everybody's like, Mike, you go on a forum. It's like it's like you're you're nothing if you don't have the Super Sixteen. I don't get that. Every, everybody I, I wants mean, the Super Sixteen. You have to be sync sound. You have to be a big ten thousand oh dollar production camera. Even though none of these people are actually shooting a frame. Right. Of film. That's why. Like, <laughs> just snobs. I just don't. I mean, the, I, to me, like the whole point of it being in four three. Is what kind of gives it the it, look. It calls back that retro yeah, feel. Yeah. yeah. And well, that's three, only lately. This is the retro. I was watching uh, Lighthouse. The, the Lighthouse. Room. No, there was a well movies. That's one. That's Lighthouse. a different one. That's one was two one. One division in four by three at first, or was that just oh, black that, and white? Um, Did they, I I, they shot six, that in sixteen or thirty five? No, it was thirty five, but it's one two one. Oh, it's okay. actually almost almost square. Yeah. But um, oh, I was watching a Budweiser commercial of all things. It was four three. Wow. Was a new one or one <laughs> brand new Budweiser commercial in the hotel room was I can't watch TV. When are they going to start Bud? shooting this format Why? like this Either. vertical? Oh, vertical. It's it's already so like, people can watch them on the phones. In the editing software, there's drop down yeah. for vertical. Yeah, there's there's yeah. presets for those now. Yeah, Mike, yeah. you had your first uh, vertical Super Eight. I saw yes on the TikTok. You were in it. Yeah, because I thought it looked pretty good. I thought it did too. Yeah, did was you see the you crap? Kino that way too. Uh, yeah, we haven't released it yet. Right? You see what oh. people do on TikTok and YouTube Shorts? No, they shoot it for the. Uh, it's shot wide frame or four yeah. by three, and then when it's vertical, if the person moves. They have to keep on cutting and re re yeah. yes. scan it. Oh my. God, it's so annoying. There's actually now like um, AI tracking in the, the oh, really? DI software. Oh, they're tracking it. it will, so it will keep the frame it'll, moving. It'll smart reframe. Oh, yeah, but it yeah. still sucks because you know it started 
way yeah. wider. That's the difference on it. But sooner but, or later, that's just going to be the it, standard. It will be. It's really kind of anything go. It's also completely square format, which started on Instagram. So you're shooting your shoot Super 8 roll, and you get your file back. The, like, the question is, like, oh, my God, if you're putting it on TikTok, you want it to be vertical. But if you're putting it on Instagram, maybe Square is okay. Square, I think Square would be fine, especially if it's something that's, like, closer to 4.3. I think it looks great on Square. 98% of FPP customers want their Super 8 file that includes sprocket holes. Weirdos. you got to show it. <laughs> well, that's because all the all the filter pre- <laughs> This is... Literally the same conversation we were having a decade ago, Mike, mm. about film presets versus just shoot film. Right. Because now there's like, and I, I get it now because I'm playing around with 16, but like you can buy these look pat packs and LUTs and, and overlays. You the right perfs. No, the perfs are always wrong. For video to make it look like, it's like, like a to give, you, to give you dust, grain, and perfs. It's you, like, sometimes you don't even see perf. That's, it's not even a real perf. It's just like a little hole. No, like, or, the, or there's put, an like, image the, in the perf. Yeah, they'll put, <laughs> yeah, they will. They'll put an image or a logo in the perf. It's ridiculous. But oh it's God. like you're going to that effort. Just try it. Try shoot film. Go to FPP. But Just if you get this. your file, what do you do? That's what you want. Throw you, it out. You, you shoot film and <laughs> develop it in a bucket. <laughs> yeah, there's one more weird format. This one didn't come along until I think the 1990s, like the mid 90s, and that was Ultra 16, and that's kind of a weird one. There's also some funky yeah, uh, eight millimeter ones, ones yeah. too, but Ultra 16 is kind of funky. It's for people like myself that have a standard 16 camera, but you don't want to have to pay to upgrade it because upgrading is like it can be a, a big thing. It's a super where, 16, yeah, yeah, because you have to re- usually recenter the lens. If it's a mirror driven camera, you got to change the mirror. It's a whole thing. You can actually, on some of these cameras, it, if you have lenses that project that larger image circle, you can kind of shave the sides of the gate an equal amount mm. uh, between the two perfs and get ultra 16, which is basically just, it's about the same area as a standard 16, but it's closer to a um, like an ultra widescreen format. Oh. And that's, it's kind of neat. Um, there was a few, yeah, there's a few movies in the 90s that, um, that were shot like that and a few in the early 2000s. This that is Doubtfire, that. I think, right? Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> no, Mrs. Doubtfire was not shot on Super um, 16 or the, Ultra the big, 16. The big one was uh, Darren Aronofsky's uh, Pi. Was okay, yeah. Pi. Ultra yeah. 16. Ultra 16. Was, and awesome. when he formatted it, did he put it in the 16 by 9 frame? Yeah, um, I don't think, I think it was kept even wider than the 16.9 okay. for that, to keep that panoramic look. Hmm. But it's it's an interesting one, and you know we could really go down the rabbit hole. There's people that are doing these weird versions of eight, which look like oh, you can put anamorphic onto mm-hmm. the four by three mm-hmm. to get an anamorphic eight. And there's also these oh. weird eights that you can run through sixteen cameras to make it look like oh, a no, super super seen. long strip. Yeah, there's that all sorts of wild stuff that's out there. To make it look like two, you know, two perf thirty five, yeah. where it's like the ultra wide. That's what happens in grainy. a pandemic. You lock somebody up with some tools in their <laughs> shed. Like, let's see what I can do. So, yeah. you have any recommendation, or everyone wants you to do what makes them happy? I think. Well, no, I there's I, a right and a wrong way. God. I really like your recommendation of like don't don't crap on the standard sixteens because like let's be realistic, none of the sixteen stuff is gonna really go beyond fourteen forty p or like four k. It's not really happening. You're just getting bigger grains, but not much detail. You're, you're getting a huge file that is unmanageable. Huge. Yes. Unless, of course, you're working in a multi multi a production. format production that yeah. is being they done already, in 4K. They've already got the stuff for it, though, yeah. right? That, that's not even discussion. But like, if you're a hobbyist and you're on forums, you're seeing people t- like screaming at you to spend money you don't have on it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just try a 4.3. The, the, the 2K is a, is a... It's a sweet spot. It's a sweet spot in the middle. It gives yeah. you a nice archival. Now, what about 8K? <laughs> I want all the K's. <laughs> Once again, if you're working on a multimedia uh, production, you're projecting on the side of a building. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, look at uh, Moon Age Daydream, the Bowie movie. Yes. That was all 4K footage, but that was. Um, what's the super wide. What's that special? Wide, Cityscope? Wide screen? No. When you go, oh, uh, IMAX. That was an IMAX movie. Really? So it's perfectly fine. 4K, really? Yes. IMAX, wow. Well, I guess that makes sense because they've had IMAX for... I mean, they had IMAX 70 millimeter, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, folks so who stress... Is, that what, is that what, That's what's next for you, right? 70 mil? You know it now. You shouldn't stress the, uh, the, the tech. I mean, get the basics. Know what you're doing. You know, if you don't Go know what you're ropes. doing, ask questions. I see so many people... It's, I, I consider the crazy that it takes to shoot any of this motion stuff exactly the same amount of crazy that it takes to shoot large format. <laughs> and people will do the exact same thing where they will buy... 
obscene amounts of stuff and like haven't shot a frame yet mm-hmm. or haven't shot that first hundred foot yeah, I don't, or fifty foot. If you've never shot any movie film and you're like, I'm gonna go with the Bolex. What? I, that, I mean, unless somebody's giving it to you, yeah, or you're getting a crazy stupid deal. I mean, why not try a magazine camera or a you know a, Keystone? A, yeah, yeah, get yeah. something. Because easy. in trying a Keystone, also it's like you try it, you like it, then you move it's whatever. up, it can and then sit on, the sit on your shelf or sell it. You will not lose. You're not going to feel bad. Not going to yeah. lose this value either. And also, a lot of folks who get into movie film like it for that look and that feel. And then what mm-hmm. they do is they buy a cheap. You know, they, maybe they're like, okay, one day I'm going to get a Bolex, or one day I'm going to get an Ari, and then they try a cheap, you know, Bell and Howell 16 millimeter movie camera. And they get the same result that they wanted, and they're happy with And then they realize, I don't need to buy a $3,000 camera. I think another thing people forget is that, like, this isn't a discussion amongst productions because productions don't buy stuff. No. They, they rent, rent everything. Yeah. They're, they're smart. Yeah, <laughs> they, didn't you see the room? The director, what he rented? <laughs> hey, Mark. <laughs> But yeah, they, they rent out whatever gear they need for a set amount of time, and then it's somebody else's problem to yeah. CLA it and like give, Keep get the good updated. lenses. Because yeah. that when you own a, a nice camera, you got to upkeep it. It's not just going to work. Yeah. A lot of the motion needs Unless it's needs German, that. it'll always work. So do we, know uh, squeak. We, yeah, squeak. do we know everything we need to know about aspect ratio? Hell no. Oh, yeah. But at least we have a good start. But if you go to the Google... The Google. 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 Tons of stuff. There's tons of stuff, and you actually get drawings of all the aspect ratios. Yeah, and there'll often be like little overlays and stuff. But yep. I guess one other thing is um, if you're if you're sweating it really bad and you're like, oh, I need this format, and your camera does another one, other things come into play. Like if you have an S, if you have something that's reflex, okay, now you need the viewfinder to change. So like, yeah, ex- oh things get expensive really quickly. Try the cheap. Try the cheap stuff first. That. That Keystone, I feel like we're we're shilling Keystone all the time, but yep. those little Keystone Criterions, the uh, A12s, I know A, I think some A9s do it. A9, yep. And then there's, uh, did you see the deluxe one, the A15? That's, that comes in like the felt case with the and it's got that that teal mm-hmm. uh, faux leather Shell, on it. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking up to get yeah, one now. It's gone. Don't look up. A15. Mike has bought I think them it's all. called the. Hold on, it, it's got a weird name. Keystone. Keystone. A15. Please hold my the Newport eBay. Deluxe. Oh, Newport what is it? Deluxe. Newport? The Newport Deluxe, oh, wow. yeah. Menthol, the menthol cool stylings of the Newport uh, New Deluxe. New Inbox, 259, 199, uh, 75 for untested. Did you say 199? Mm hmm. Oh, new in the box? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's actually. 74.99 runs. Let's, let's yeah. see. Let me see picture. You got picture? Yeah. And you know if they're a smoker because it'll look closer to brown. It looks. It looks. <laughs> that nice it's, looks smile. really complicated. A little more com- complicated. It's. It's like almost H sixteen looking, but it's not. It's still spring wound and yeah. 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 You, you, you seem to get overwhelmed by a lot of knobs and buttons, yeah. huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like knobs and buttons. What else? <laughs> if you get into this stuff or you start trying out the motion, go to therapy. <laughs> that yes, but, but like force yourself to shoot. Like that was the mm-hmm. hardest part for me. I think I had. I had that airy mic for four months, and I like I shot something, and then like I, I forgot about it, and I wasn't forcing myself to get out there and use it, and it's just like being afraid of any other like process. Just get, make it a habit of like loading it up and and playing around. Have a dummy roll. A lot of cameras will come with that, but get used to showing up with it, and it's my favorite little tool for family trips now or family events because it feels like you're watching a memory. Mm-hmm. It's really, really cool, especially in that four by three. Yeah. Some frames will skip. It, it's great. The best experience is to grab your camera and go all the time. Like, yes. like I said, go in a family event, go. You know, pick it up and, and show up and sh- shoot it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what I that's what I do with the Keystone. That's why it's become my grab and go camera because you start feeling comfortable with it. Yes, then you're not worried about the. No, nope. I stopped worrying about all of that other stuff I was seeing on the forum posts and people, you know, say, oh, you got to have this. Some of those people, I don't They're know how they... are not posting anything. What else? That's it. Go shoot. <laughs> Podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. <laughs> hey, we love talking about movie film and the response has been really, really great. Really? Surprisingly great. Yeah. We yeah. haven't like dropped off to like four people? No, no. People were very <laughs> interested. And, you know, for movie film, from, you know, from... An amateur hobbyist perspective, there's not a lot out there of just kind of chat, chit chat. No, you know about picking up cheap cameras or you know workarounds, yeah. buying a tank, aspect ratio. So love to hear your comments, and it'll you know warrant us doing uh, another episode. 
I've got a silly, stupid question. What's that? Was there ever an instant motion, like motion picture film? Yeah, there was Polaroid. Yeah, Polavision. Pol- Polavision. It drove. Uh, dro- it, it drove. Uh, that was it for Polaroid. Who was the chief there? Uh, Edmund Land. It, it. They. They pushed him right out. Yeah. Oh. It's it was a, poorly timed because it came out right around beta, video, beta video, yeah, video cam, and that was it. But so Polavision is nothing more than Super Eight film in a cartridge, mm-hmm. but it's their proprietary kind of self-developing thing. film. They have the like you the know, Polychrome, yes, yeah, same as Polychrome, yeah. oh, okay. exactly the same. And our friend in Canada, Noah, did a great video on Polavision. If you want to like see how it works, oh and yeah, yeah, I've got a couple of cartridges and you shoot it yeah. Super Eight, and then their machine, you pop the thing in, and the chemistry is all in there. It's developing the film. Wow, and then. This is where I think they failed. Then you can only play it in their proprietary oh, player. So you could you could extract it out of the cartridge. You could, you but who, no one would no, think to no, do no, that. No, no. If it had come out five years prior, yes, I think it would have been. So huge. it was just timing versus modern yep. tech. Okay, and they did the huge, huge push with like Danny Kay was the like oh, they really they hired like top spokespeople. What year was this? Seventy nine. I want to say Danny Kay like a thousand yeah, years 77, old. Seventy seven, seventy eight. Seventy eight. Seventy eight. Danny Kay, he was old. Swing and save, Danny Kay. The other guy did it too. Who's the guy who's in? Uh, Tony Curtis. No, Tony. He's a, Tony he's in Tony. the early Woody Allen films. Tony Roberts. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that guy doing that. The other problem with it was even when it was new, the image quality Horrible. was not great. The color was not. It was like you know almost as bad as Ektachrome One Hundred and Sixty. <laughs> no, nothing. Nothing. It's not <laughs> that bad. No, Ektachrome One Hundred and Sixty, the Super A format in its day. It was fine. It wasn't good. Yeah, except except if you wanted like deep, yeah, reds no, and yeah. browns. Yeah, then you were kind well, of well. We're going off topic. All right. What's what's available on FPP? Oh my god, that's your topic of hey, what is it? What films available? Oh gosh, I've got the FPP movie film. Now these are the ones that are in stock right now. Yeah. of this filming. So there could be more or less. That's a by long the time list. It. It's a long list. Oh gosh. So black and white sixty millimeter negative. We've got uh, black and white one hundred. Speed film, double perf, black and white 400, double perf, black and white 3, which is a ISO 3, single perf, Sonic 25, which is an orthochromatic 25 speed film, that's single perf, Yeti, 10 ASA film, single perf, Kodak Double X, which is a black and white negative single perf, then we have black and white reversal 16, black and white 100 in double perf, black and white 40 in double perf, Sonic 12, in single perf, Yeti 1 in single perf, and Tri-X in single perf. Color reversal 16, we've got Ektachrome single and double perf. Color negative, we've got 500T double and single perf. 50D double and single perf. 200T in single, 250D in single, and then FPP's Ultra Blue, which is a 3 ISO film, that's in single perf. Okay, halfway through. Then we have double 8 in 100 feet for you Bolex users. Black and white 100 negative, black and white 400 negative, black and white 100 reversal, black and white 400 reversal, double eight and 25 foot negative. We've got Cine black and white 100, Cine 400, Eastman double X and a 200 ISO, double eight reversal. We've got black and white 100 and 400, and then Super 8, which most people will know, 200T, 500T, 50D, Ektachrome, and Tri-X. Right. Can you cross 500T off that list? So we have a couple. <laughs> Why? Just because you don't like it, or uh, personally, I love it if if shot in a Indoors. proper setting. Indoors. But the the it is a um, rash, I would say, <laughs> of people who are just grabbing either grabbing speed and they're going out with their super eight camera in the blazing sun at the beach. Well, the problem good. is, or in the desert, there's a lot of super eight cameras that can't handle the notching for the 500 T cartridge. Oh, no, so, so it's shooting it, blow it out. It's shooting, it's shooting at, at 100, 100 or 160. Uh, there's, but there are, no, there's actually a lot of super eight cameras that can handle it. There's a number of, but it's still way models. too bright in the desert to be oh, shooting. Oh God, yeah, yeah, no. So what are you doing yeah. shooting 500? You know, need the 40. Yeah, absolutely. So people's home movies, in my opinion, are ruined. Now we get an image out of it, but we have to like drag an image yeah. out of it. Dave showed me one yeah. that was coming through, and it was a, it was a 500. That was like no filter, just like yep. daylight, and it was no cap. It was pulling. It was taking 
everything in that machine <laughs> yeah. to get to get like a balanced readable image out of it. He's you can like, come by any day and see that. But he's got like a pre- he's like, he's like oh it's no problem and he clicks the preset and I look at the the waveform you know, the the RGB histogram no. and it's just like Whomp. like it just <laughs> yeah. smacks it in the face. That would have been gorgeous film if shot in 50D. Yeah. Or even even 200 T. Yeah. That's why I, I don't really think unless you're an experienced shooter anyone needs 500T yet that is the top film people grab. I'm really glad I talked to you before I started going it down the rabbit hole because you're like Matt just just shoot 50D and I was like oh that's so slow. really slow yeah. but no. like, I got it back and it's amazing. Amazing. And when well, you're shooting at 130th it's not that slow. No. I shot 50D <laughs> indoors at my parents house with a little just a little handheld uh what do you call it light light Sun. panel. Oh. Light panel. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So much light at 50D. At night or day? My parents' house, day. So it's so light you coming had sunlight coming in. Yeah, and then the light. Little like, fill. Like here, they have the, you know. Did the, you turn every light on in the house? I certainly did. Okay. <laughs> That's also uh, t- the tip of the day. You're going to shoot in, shoot indoors, but turn Screw on. the environment. Turn on all your lights. <laughs> and <laughs> don't be afraid to position your people. Yeah. When you're paying 40, 50, 60 bucks a roll. Yeah. You know, say, yeah. I, I, it don't may, be stupid. Yeah, like get the best <laughs> out of it. Yeah, you know, those kids are there. They're supposed to listen to you. So yeah. you tell them <laughs> to do what you to. want. A big word there. Well, if you're per, if you're you know where your children are going to like open up Christmas presents or whatever, just prepare for it. Move the lamp or or set up a, a light on a tripod yeah. or something. Yeah, or take that or take that little reading lamp and just kind of move it over. Yeah, it's cheat. very simple yeah. to do. It's just yeah. giving it some thought. That's all we have. Podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. Hamana, hamana, hamana.